everyone. Today we're going to walk through a code pattern that teaches us how to deploy a Core ML model with Watson Visual Recognition to an iOS application. The code pattern is available on developer.ibm.com slash code slash patterns. You can see in the code pattern there's a brief overview section, an architecture diagram, and then most importantly at the bottom there's an option to find the code. The code for this code pattern is located on GitHub, specifically the Watson Developer Cloud GitHub organization. You can go there by following the link, the link below. There's two sections to this GitHub repo. They both pertain to using visual recognition with Core ML. The first one's a more simple starter uh, scenario, but we'll be focusing on the custom one. For here, we're going to create our own custom classifiers in Watson Visual Recognition and then deploy them with Core ML to an iOS application. All the code and the data, everything that we'll be needing is in this GitHub repo. Now to set up the Watson Visual Recognition classifiers, we're actually going to use Watson Studio, a recently announced product. It's available on dataplatform.ibm.com. Here we're going to go ahead and click New Project and select the Visual Recognition option. Now we're going to select a name and a description. And we're also going, you can see on the right that it's actually provisioned a cloud object storage and a Watson visual recognition service for us. All right, now our Watson visual recognition service is going to be available in just a second. To begin using our Watson visual recognition service, we need to provide it with a bunch of images to create a custom classifier. Those images are going to be located in the GitHub repo. So let's go ahead and start cloning that repo. We start by creating an empty directory to act as a workspace. Now we go ahead and clone the repo. Now we're ready to start uploading images and creating custom classifiers. We go to the menu on the right hand side to select the files that we're going to load. Go to the correct directory of the cloned GitHub repo. There's a folder in there called training images. Now we select all the zip files there. This will automatically start to upload them to our cloud object storage account. This shouldn't take too long. Once the progress bar is completed, we can then add each new set of images to the model to create a custom classifier. Do that by selecting the three button menu on the right hand side of each data set and selecting add model. Each custom classifier will automatically begin to be trained. Once they're added entirely, we can then click the Train Model button on the top right. You can see here the indicator says our model is now available for training. We go ahead and click that option. To train the model completely for this exercise should only take a few minutes. The more images and the more classifiers you, you choose to create, the longer the model training typically takes. You can see here now that the model is ready to be used, and we can swipe away that notification. Watson Studio also has several built in features that you can use. So, for instance, if we click the Watson Visual Recognition Service name, we see some options there at the bottom related to our custom classifier. We'll hit that test button. A bunch of information about our custom classifier shows up. Now let's go ahead and click that test tab. Here we can actually upload photos directly to the tool 
without having to create an application on our own, we're able to test our custom classifier. So here I'll drop in a photo of a USB cable, and you can see the confidence scores in there. Another really cool feature is the implementation tab. You can see here that code snippets are automatically generated for you. For instance, there's options for using uh, interacting with the APIs using curl, using Java, Node, and Python. They go over typical examples such as classifying an image, getting a list of classifiers. Included in this tab is now a section for CoreML. Here it actually has code snippets on how to download the CoreML model and use it offline, and also how to list classifiers. These are all written in Swift. There's also an option to download the CoreML model locally. So now that we have our model created on the cloud, let's go ahead and start creating our application. So before we start changing any Swift code, we first have to install the necessary prerequisites. Let's go back to our GitHub repo and navigate to the CoreML Vision Custom directory. From here, we run the command Carthage Bootstrap dash dash platform iOS. This will install any necessary dependencies and libraries, such as the Watson Swift SDK. After our dependencies have been installed, we're now able to launch Xcode. Let's open the current directory that we're in. Once Xcode is up, let's find the image classification view controller file. It is this file we'll need to update with our API key and our classifier ID. To find our API key and classifier ID, we go back to Watson Studio. Let's launch the service. From here, we can go to the Credentials tab, hit View Credentials, and there's our API key. Let's copy and paste that into our Swift code. Now let's go back, and on this screen over here, you're actually able to see the classifier ID. There's a handy copy button right there. Let's also now copy this into our Swift code. For the purposes of this code pattern, this should be all the code changes that you need to perform. We're now going to go ahead and attempt to build and run the application. We'll select the play button on the top left. This should bring up a simulator of an iPhone. The simulator automatically starts by launching our application. And you'll notice that the first thing it tries to do is compile the model that's specified with the uh, model ID that we input earlier. Now let's try to classify a photo. I saved a few images on the device earlier. The USB one is identified correctly, as is the HDMI cable. I also went ahead and downloaded a bunch of other images of cables. Uh, USB, HDMI, mini, and just for fun, I also downloaded a DVI cable since we didn't have a classifier for that, but it kind of looks like a VGA cable. Now we can go ahead and test these images as well in our simulator. We simply need to open up the Finder window and drag and drop the images onto our simulator. The photos are automatically added to the photo library and then we can use the application again to try them out. Here, let's go and select one of the new photos that we, in, that we added. The new USB photo is correctly identified as USB. The HDMI mini is also identified as HDMI. And the DVI cable is identified as a VGA. That's the limitation of our model right now. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something about CoreML and Watson Visual Recognition.